Hang on a second. There we go, mood set. Hey fellas, don't mind me, just doing what every reasonable person does on Halloween. Loitering. It's October 31st, if your calendar didn't tell you that, maybe my outfit will. Did you piss yourself? Well, there's only one thing to do on Halloween besides being a loser loner and watching horror movies all day, and that's partying. We could just not celebrate Halloween at all. Now you may be asking, Lucas aren't parties traditionally held at night? And to that I say... Yeah. But you don't understand it, right? If I do the party at four in the afternoon, I can get ahead of the party next door and bring everyone over here. You know the party with the music and the snacks and the genuinely fun stuff? I'm a blast to be around. So you may be asking, well, Lucas, if you're not doing any of that, what are you doing for this Halloween party? Pig talk. It's been a lifelong dream of mine to talk about compressed puppet pigs for 10 minutes. Why not do it on the scariest day of the year? Well, it's still a couple more hours till the party starts. I can't wait. I put up ads everywhere. So I might as well be proactive and start the pig talk now. Welcome to the best way to celebrate Halloween. Also known as a very cleverly disguised review of Pigs in Space for the Atari 2600 as a Halloween video. The Muppets, some of the most colourful, elaborate characters out there. Hypothetical, right? What happens if I put them in a blender? This happens, but to get to this, we need to look at that. What's that? You don't want to know. The Muppets are a multimedia empire. I mean, what's there not to love about a talking fleece frog? These puppet motherfuckers have extended way beyond film and television, from books to theme parks and even video games, very few of which are actually good. There's been over 50 Muppet games, and only like a solo two of them are actually good. For every Muppets race mania, there's 10 Muppet adventure chaos at the carnivals. This isn't sustainable. Back then in the 80s and 90s, there were a lot of Muppet video games, but that seemed to die down over the years, as have the Muppets. The last dedicated Muppets video game was Muppet Movie Adventures on the PS Vita. I played this when I was like seven years old and enjoyed it, then came back to it another five years later and realized it wasn't very good. That's the beauty of game design for children. You could hook them on Pong for hours. What makes you think they won't love Muppet Movie Adventures at that age? Since then, the Muppets have featured in a few video games, but it's been a while since we've been able to play as Kermit the Frog, and it's a shame there's so much potential here. But I'm not here to talk about the potential of a future Muppets game. I'm here to investigate the downward spiral of them, and there's only one way to do that by going back to the very beginning. The very beginning. So let's head on over to Atari. Well, they may not have been the first in the gaming scene. If someone walks up to you on the road and asks you to name a classic video game before the NES, you should run. But also the chances are that your mind will jump to classic games like Centipede, Asteroids, Pitfall, games that don't hold up perfectly by today's standards, but are always great to go back to as fun high score games. The majority of them are primitive, but for the late 70s and early 80s, what else were you going to do? So no, they're not amazing, but oh, and I imagine many others have huge respect for these games. Without them, we never would have gotten this. Playing them from time to time is a neat experience. Not only are you experiencing gaming history, at least five of them are actually decently fun for like five minutes. Games like Space Invaders, Pitfall, Adventure, they hold up surprisingly well for games that released over 40 years ago. There's a reason you can still go to the arcade and play Space Invaders. They're fun games. Now on the other end of that spectrum, there's stuff like Star Fox. Not this Star Fox, this Star Fox. If there are games like this on the 2600, what chance does that give Pigs in Space? Well, to find out, let's head back to Pigs in Space, released in 1983 for the Atari 2600. I really have nothing better to do. Well, party started half an hour ago and no one's here. Just me and my bitching. How does this happen? I was spreading the word around everywhere. I even put up an ad on MySpace. I guess I could try reaching out to some people personally. I could always try Mr. Dictionary. You free? Yeah, um, no. Probably busy reading the dictionary. I could always try Bath Ghost. Yeah, I'm not even gonna ask. <sighs> Why y'all? Becky said she'd be here in five. Well, until then, I guess I just gotta wait it out. Mm. Skeleton showed up. My name is John. I really don't care. According to multiple sources, this was the last game released in the Atari children's line, putting it on par with this. It is actually probably worth noting that there were multiple Sesame Street games released under this line, but like, I don't care about Sesame Street, I tickled Elmo once. Hey, no, what, do mean mean what do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? As the title suggests, this is based on the Pigs in Space sketch from the Muppet Show, and it definitely shows. In the box art, at least, I'm not too sure about the game. Even in the box art, it struggles to show that. The usual lineup for Pigs in Space is Captain Ling, Hogthrob, Miss Piggy, and Dr. Julius Strangebork, and in the box art, we have... Like, one and a half of them. Miss Piggy's here in full force, we have half of Hogthrob, and then Gonzo is there? I didn't even think he's in any of the sketches. At least some of the promotional material tries, especially this magazine here, which is really cool. This thing has some cool art and a bunch of details in the game, including the three stages included being chicken baiters, pastoroids, and escape from the planet of the Gonzoids. Gonzo isn't even in fucking pigs in space! Why do you care so much? Why don't you? I have a life. You literally don't. Now yeah, whatever, it's a 2600 game, and I could try to justify this, but there's very little development history on Pigs in Space. The Wikipedia article just says it was designed by Michael Cerisio in collaboration with Jim Henson and programmed by... You know, I can't be bothered reading names out anymore, you get the idea. Enough going over the Wikipedia article, let's try Pigs in Space out on my totally authentic 2600. 
it's called emulation. I'm not I'm not buying this, man. Loading up the game, we get placed onto the title screen with a choice between three stages, as I mentioned earlier. So let's try out our first one, Chicken Vaders. <laughs> You know exactly what I'm about to say. I'll give it this. Graphically, it's very impressive. For an Atari 2600, having a floating Gonzo head at the top that looks that good genuinely surprised me, especially for a game like this. If you knew anything about Pigs in Space, you'd probably be able to deduce that this was Link Hogthrob. Otherwise, I'm sorry. And those sure are chickens. Overall, for a 2600 game, especially of this caliber, the sprites are pretty solid. But of course, that means nothing if there isn't a game here. So what is the game? Well, we have Gonzo controlling an army of chickens as they shoot something at you. Oh god. And of course, the player takes on the role of Link Hogthrob as he defends himself and shoots them right back. There's not much strategy to you just have to avoid their... some things as you shoot them back. It makes for a decently fun high score game, but... Come on, you knew it was gonna happen. This is just damn space invaders. You put them side by side and the similarities are obvious. Like, who are they fooling here? Probably the four-year-olds playing this game, but I'm not a four-year-old, I'm a bitch. I can't be too harsh, and there were at least 10 space invaders clones by this point, and there wasn't really much opportunity on the 2600 to do much beyond this, but like... Come on, these are the Muppets. To that you might say, exactly. To that I say, please shut up. Look, on its own, it's decent fun, but compared to Space Invaders, there are a lot of issues here. This game did away with the bunkers in the original Space Invaders, which weirdly makes this a lot less tactical. I mean, sure, it makes it easier for the player to shoot the targets, but it also makes it easier for the targets to shoot the player. It's this really weird game of chance. Another thing is that the difficulty of Space Invaders increases incrementally, with the aliens getting faster as you defeat more of them. It makes you genuinely have to pay attention and learn how to get better at the game. In Chicken Invaders, it only speeds up when you get down to the last chicken. That makes this pointless. Even then, it's not that difficult to shoot the last chicken. This game is painfully easy. Now, of course, this was made for children, so I'm not surprised, but are you really expecting this little of children? Space Invaders was marketed to children as well, and it did way better than Pigs in Space, so why couldn't this game introduce a sense of challenge as well? Overall, it's very easy and a blatant knockoff of Space Invaders, but it controls well and the gameplay is decently fun. Yeah, it gets boring after like five minutes, but so do most Atari games. So I give it a patented try it if you're bored of Space Invaders and like the Muppets out of 10. Moving on to the next stage. This is Pastroids. Now, judging by the last stage, you think this is just a copy of Asteroids, but but no. Does that mean they crafted something actually original? Also no! Before I start making stupid uneducated comparisons, I'll talk about the stage as a whole first. You play as Miss Piggy though, you probably wouldn't know that if it didn't tell you and you have to make your way across this map and reach the swine trek. Those yellow lines represent past and the big brown balls represent meatballs. At least I hope so, because if those big brown balls represented anything else, this would not be a Muppets game. Don't make a Costa's Revenge joke. I'm surprised you even know what that is. I've been playing it a lot recently. How come? November's coming up. You have to slowly make your way through this in an attempt to reach the swine trek, the ship from Pigs in Space. All things considered, it's a pretty good model of the swine trick, and I like how they alternate the lines to make it seem as if it's moving. If it just slid across, it would have been way less convincing. The fact that it looks like it's actually rotating is really neat. However, the fact that it is moving gives a really solid challenge in that you have to reach the swine track before it goes off screen. It gets boring quickly, sure, but actually trying to make your way across the map as fast as possible is fairly engaging. If you karate chop the meatballs, you get extra points, which is very in style for Miss Piggy. The more you play it, the better you get, identifying new ways to dodge obstacles and get there as fast as possible. There's not much challenge to it, though. When you get hit by an obstacle, you're only shifted back a bit instead of being sent to the start. I can't really complain too much considering this is a kids game but it would have been a nice option to be able to toggle the difficulty but again this is a kids game for the Atari 2600. You catching my drive here? Okay, enough talking about the actual game. Let's point out the obvious. This is just a copy of Freeway, which in and of itself is already a copy of Frogger. I would pay a lot to see that court hearing. Again, there were a lot of games like this back then but come on, Pigs in Space deserves better. I'm gonna be comparing it to Freeway for the sake of actually making a solid point here. Come on, it's obvious. In Freeway, you control the player as they go from one side of the road to the other as cars go after you. And in Pastoroids, you do the same, except it's in space. What a difference. Interestingly, Pastoroids makes no attempt to make the game any easier like they did with Chick Invaders. So they assume kids can do this, but not this. What was their reasoning there? Overall, just like Chick Invaders, this gets boring quickly, and it's a blatant knockoff, but it tries. The graphics are decent. I like the Swine Trek animation. There's a solid sense of challenge on like Chick Invaders, but everything else... Come on, just play Freeway. Well, that's Pastoids. Let's move on to our final stage, Escape from the Planet of the Gonzoids. Would you believe me if I told you this was another shameless knockoff? Well, that's on you for trusting me, because this is its own original stage. It's not a direct knockoff of anything, but with how many space shooters there were on the 2600, you could argue this was inspired by like 10 games. Doesn't mean it's any good. In fact, I'd argue it's the worst of the three stages in this game. According to this magazine, you control Dr. Julius Strangepork inside this swine truck as he makes his way through... What, what is this? Apparently, it's a pizza mine, because... Those exist? Why are you trying to put logic into a game about talking pigs in space? You mean you don't do this regularly? No, no sane person does that. What's a sane? Hey guys, back from the morgue. Go back to the tub. <laughs> you control the spine trick through the pizza mine and try to shoot these gonzoids as they throw pizzas at you. It's a solid concept. 
Doesn't mean it's a good stage. It controls painfully slow. My sense of direction here is killing me. So you shoot at the front of the swan trek while attempting to hit Gonzoids on your side. How does that work? How do you think? It doesn't, does it? No. The projectile does this really awkward curve when shooting, so you have to time it just perfectly to hit any of the Gonzoids. And even then, the hit detection is finicky. I just try to go past them. Overall, it's a pain to control, and the gameplay is very slow and very boring. If I had to say anything positive about it, the swan trek looks nice again. The Gonzoids look okay. It ends. That's probably the best thing the stage is going for it. It's so tedious that there's no fun in going for a high score. It just gets boring after your first try. Hell, I'd argue you got boring on my first try. This is definitely the worst of the three stages here, and considering it's the only original one, that really says something. And that is Pigs in Space. For a 2600 game, it's decent fun for a bit, and it's very true to the source material, which you can't say about most 2600 games. Like E.T., there's a reason they buried this in the desert. And judging it from the perspective of the audience it was marketed to, this is really fun. If you were exposed to this as a young child back then who had no clue what Space Invaders or Freeway was, you'd have a blast with these three stages. These two stages. And hell, even if you were exposed to them like I was, I still had a fair bit of fun with it. It's not a perfect game. I'd argue it's not even a great one, but it's solid enough. I'd also argue it's a very solid deal. You get three games here and two of them are good. Now, they are knockoffs, but they're good knockoffs. As a Muppets fan, I didn't expect much from this and I got something out of it. Do I recommend paying these prices for it? No. But if you're into illegal emulation or find a copy of it for like five bucks at a garage sale, go ahead, it's decent fun. Well, that was a reluctant big discussion. What about Miss Piggy's wedding? You know, the cancel game for the 2600 where you played as Kermit the Frog and tried to escape Miss Piggy and avoid wedding guests? It was lost until the late 90s until the private collector found the prototype and released it to the public. Yeah, I feel like the whole pig babble is more my thing. Yeah, you're right, that felt wrong. Never do it again. Understood. Well, that was pig talk. It's a shame only one person showed up. I'm right here. But truth be told, it was great to have anyone to share a little wine about pigs in space with. If there's anything I learned, it's that the real Halloween spirit isn't dressing up or going out to get candy. It's just spending time with friends. <sighs> Don't get all soppy now, you're making me feel bad for hating my time here. Did you just want to go to the party next door? Please, I've been scumming in my seat this entire time. <sighs> My throat hurts now. I had a good time this Halloween, which is really saying something considering how much I've been whining for the past 10 minutes. But hey, it's all a part of the magic of Halloween. Getting together with friends, having a good laugh. I don't even have a funny joke to end this one on. I'm just feeling really, really good. I'm gonna go cook pork now. Ow.